Right, what is going on ladies and gents? Welcome back to another video. I'm here with Tim Stewart Fitness. Um, we're going to be filming a Q&A today. Might be a long one, it's going to be quite raw. Um, we've got quite a few questions uh, which I put on my Instagram. If you're not following my Instagram, I don't know what you're doing. Follow at Tom Rowe and obviously follow um, Tim Stewart Tim Fitness. Um, so yeah, we're just going to sit here for a while, talk. Um, Saturday, it's not a very nice day out, so we'll just sit here and talk for a while to be honest. Um, got a couple of questions, we've got about 20. Uh, so we're just going to sit and waffle on to be honest, so yeah. Jeez. So first question I have is... No, whoa, 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 whoa. Let us introduce Come on, come on. I'm going to leave this really raw, you know. What, even this bit? Yeah, kind of. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel, welcome to another video. This is the third video of my prep series. We are here with Tom. Jeez. Make sure you uh, subscribe to Tom's channel, it'll be in the first link in the description below. Uh, we're doing a Q&A today, a really raw Q&A, so we're probably going to be little editing and we're just going to go back and forth. We both put on our Instagram story, uh, ask us questions, at Tim Stewart Fitness. Tom Rowe, I almost at forgot Tom then, Rowe. at Tom Rowe. And your fitness? T-Row Fit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, we're just going to start off with Q and A. Uh, we've got fitness questions, lifestyle questions, uni questions. So yeah, let's get started. Right. So we will start with me. First question I have from Cavell Patel. It's legit. Name. Um, <laughs> if you could take any other degree, what would it be, um, and why? You go on. Then. What do you What do you study then? I study sports science, sport and exercise science at um, Uni Birmingham. If I could take another degree. Uh, well, I was going to do dentist, uh, dentistry and uh, chemical engineering before all this, but that I had uh, no interest in them in the end, so I didn't choose them. I'd probably choose something I was passionate about, and I'd probably do what Liam or Jermaine was doing at BCU. Like, I don't know what the title is, but it's kind of like mine, but less sciencey. And they just do one rep maxes, five rep maxes, analysing form, stimulants, steroids. They just learn everything fun about lifting. Uh, yeah, so I'd probably, I'd probably just do that and then probably do my new uh, nutrition masters and PhD as well in that. But yeah, that's probably what I'd do. Same yeah, as Liam and well, Jermaine. With architecture as well, I'd definitely do something along the lines of like sport or nutrition or some form of training. To be honest, because I just get architecture is good, but I'm not as passionate about architecture as I am about training and obviously YouTube and all that kind of stuff. So I'd probably go in the direction of doing something like sports nutrition or sports science or something like that. Not like I'm very good at science and stuff, but something I'm interested in, I probably yeah. work hard for it. Um, but yeah, probably something along the lines of sports nutrition or something like that. So it is quite, it's quite sick to be fair. Sweet, so tphillips.s asks me, does it get hard balancing your university work with the gym? Yes. Yes and no, actually. I personally kind of just get on with it. Um, I usually, because I, I know I'm going to train every day, so I will set an hour and a half or to two hours every day aside to train, um, and I'll just base my kind of like routine around that. Um, so, like I always say in all my videos, routine is probably like the key thing for me. Um, having a set thing you're going to be doing every day, you wake up in the morning, have your coffee, have your breakfast, um, at a certain time do like an hour's worth of work, go to the gym, whatever, um, and kind of base your day around your training. Um, so if you want to do something, whether that's going out in the evening, if you want to go out on an evening, base your work and your day around you going out in the evening. So make sure you get enough work done in the day or make sure you're eating enough food, um, drinking enough water, that kind of stuff. So for me, I just kind of, make sure I'm training for an hour and a half to two hours in the day, make time for that and kind of just work my day around that and all my uni work around that. But it can be difficult. Some days obviously when you've got like deadlines and stuff, it can be a bit of a nightmare trying to squeeze in the gym. Um, but yeah, just got to go on a bit to be honest. Uh, yeah, it does get difficult. Uh, I wish I had a routine like Tom, but I'll be honest with you, I, 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 I do prioritise gym over uni. Um, and that's something that's got to change next year. Obviously, it's my final year uh, for this course, and that has got to change. Like, I do typically leave coursework to the last minute and then just go to the library for like six, eight hours straight for three days and just blast it out. Um, but yeah, it does get difficult. Like, this weekend, I've got so much coursework on in for Monday, and so today's been a massive squeeze. Tomorrow's going to be a massive squeeze, and I potentially won't train Monday because I've left it the like, last minute to do. Um, and I do need. 
like prep is all about routine as well. So I am getting into a routine now, waking up at the same time, eating at the same time, doing work, training at the same time. But uh, throughout the like the bulk, one thing for next year that I will change with my bulk is that I will get into a proper, proper uh, routine and be very meticulous with my routine because it, it massively helps with gains and also with the uni work and just general life. Your body likes routine like in every single way. Um, so I do need to take tips off you though and get into a, I guess get into a good routine because you are, you are good with balancing working yeah. uni compared to me I do leave things at the last minute and I also guess that if you've like with Tim prepping at the moment now he's got kind of like a goal and he's got something to work towards I guess if you have that goal like obviously when you're balking and stuff you don't have a goal you're, no, not, yeah. you're not working towards something um, so maybe if you've got a deadline at uni and you're working towards that um, you can you can kind of set out a routine it's much easier to set out a routine if you do have a goal and you've got a date to do something um, so I guess give yourself little goals as well that will help you trying to balance it out um, but yeah moving on we have a question from Andy Saunders great question thoughts on the new Avengers trailer Endgame do you know I'm a super fan yeah, I know, you'll, you'll, right. you'll, you'll right. absolutely uh, love it, bro. All <laughs> right, yeah, so uh, if anyone doesn't know, I'm a comic book fanatic. Um, Absolutely weird. Oh, I, I've watched that trailer 20 plus times in the first day. I was dripping. I was wet. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's Honestly, sick, man. It's oh, so it's sick. Unbe they literally showed n barely any new footage, nothing remotely interesting from the film, played a load of flashbacks from the old films, and I was there just shaking watching it. I was that excited. Um, absolutely unbelievable i can't wait it's going to be the best comic book film ever infinity war was second mate. that's waller yeah <laughs> waller's just walking past in the hood oh my god amazing i can't wait i'm booking as soon as i can i'm booking imax again because i watched infinity war imax and it was just you've seen captain like, marvel haven't you captain marvel have you no oh no, captain savage savage she's in it though yeah i know she is yeah, yeah she's good yeah. captain marvel's good brie lawson's really good but the film lacks a plot and a villain what do you think to the trailer it was like well the other day when me and Jacob saw it come up on Instagram, I'm not actually joking, we were absolutely jumping around the yeah, house, no. absolutely gasped, we sat down, we turned all the lights off, got it up on the big screen, the trailer, and um, literally, I was sat there, I know it sounds fucking stupid, I was sat there with goosebumps. Oh, I was. was the beginning, was like, so, yo, just playing old suits, suits. with just that, oh, the new suits, when they revealed yeah. the quantum realm suits. <laughs> But um, yes. just like the flashbacks and the, the voiceovers, yeah. you're just like looking over the last 10 years, yeah. like gutted that Captain Tony's gonna die. Fact, they're gonna die. Spoiler. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my question. Good. I'm not reading out who's done it now, I can't be asked. <laughs> Why do you have higher fat on rest days and surely that deposits more fat? I think that means like, does fat deposit fat? Do you have higher fat on rest days? When I was cutting last year, I did, yeah. Um, I have higher fat and rest days because I don't need as many carbs because I'm not training, and so I use the calories with fat. Uh, fat doesn't deposit fat. What deposits fat is the caloric balance throughout the day. So if you're in a caloric, def uh, caloric surplus, more calories than you expend, then you are going to deposit fat. That doesn't matter if you've got a super high fat diet or low fat diet. Um, I keep my fats nice and high in a rest day um, for recovery and because fats are so essential in hormone production. Um, and so yeah, that's why I keep my fats high on a rest day. And then I utilize carbs on the training day uh, for pre and post workout for energy and for glycogen stores afterwards to replace my glycogen stores. He answered it there. Uh, personally, for me, I, I'm, I don't know that much about that kind of stuff about nutrition. Obviously, Tim studying sport and nutrition, um, he knows a lot more than me. But for me, when I was cutting last year on my rest days, I think I did bump my fats up. Um, purely down to like having many cheat days as well, so it kind of prevents you from having cravings as well. Um, but yeah, that was my experience. For I also like on my rest days as well to get like I always, I always have a fish. Um, and that's to get my amigas in as well because they're essential in brain and heart. Uh, look after your brain and your heart, so yeah, but yeah. Um, so this question, I guess, is more directed towards me. Um, what's your biggest dream to do architectural-wise? Uh, at this stage, I probably do not know. Um, I guess the biggest dream at the moment is to have my own business, my own, my own firm and just make it a massive firm. Um, obviously, that would be sick to have your own company in architecture because obviously it's good money, it's good experience, travel, Obviously, it's just sick designing buildings um, and to actually see a building like physically go up and say like, yeah, I designed that, I was yeah, part of that cool. construction, it's pretty sick. Um, but in terms of actually like what I want to build, I don't know, probably just something massive, something bridges. that people will remember. Not bridges. Bridges. Nah. bridges. Like skyscrapers. Bridges. bridges are boring, bro. Like skyscrapers, stuff like that. 
Yeah, or like houses. Houses. Like very, very luxury houses. Like for someone famous. Ah, oh, bridges boring. Crazy. Bridges boring. Are they? Yeah, cause it's a lot of structural engineering in bridges. Oh, quite cool seeing an ace bridge go up though. Yeah, it'll be quite sick. I wouldn't know how to build a bridge. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, in terms of like actual actual building, I probably do not know what I want to do. Um, but yeah, probably having my own business that'd be pretty sick um, in the future. Uh, do you prefer cutting or bulking? It's a that's a difficult question, difficult, isn't it? Um, well, I'll let you answer that first. I think I think it's the same with both. I think beginning of a bulk, things ace. Yep. When you when you start you see you get stronger, yeah. stronger, you see yourself getting bigger, you see yourself getting fuller. Uh, and then the beginning of a cut ace, because you see the change is so rapid, you're not really losing any strength at the start. Yeah. Every single day or every week you're seeing the weight go down, like you're excited, you've got a goal in mind. But then the end of the cut, you're depleted as hell, you're weak as fuck, you feel like crap, yeah. you look good. Yeah. End of a bolt, you look like crap. Well, you, you, look, full, you look good without a t-shirt. Yeah, you, you look with, good with, with a t-shirt on, you look crap without, and, yeah. and like you feel full. And like you're kind of bored of eating that many calories now. Yeah. So like I think the boat, the beginning of both, until the best, like the, the last, phase, the last yeah. quarter, the phase, like is great. And then it's and then it's trash. Yeah. So they're both they're both great, and they're both like part of the process of, yeah. of bodybuilding. And uh, I guess training. as well with bulking, it's a lot more relaxed. You're a lot more. You yeah. Can go out. You can go out for meals with your family. You don't have to miss out on yeah, meals. You don't have to kind of. It's not as strict in terms of what you're eating, and obviously you will be tracking your, your calories. Well, I say that, but I don't track my calories. Um, but it's not as strict um, no. but then with the, the whole cutting thing obviously it's good to see progress and if you're seeing progress you're going to be more motivated to keep going um, and obviously like we mentioned about the whole routine thing cutting is sick for a routine you yeah. can literally you can plan out everything um, and it, like seeing everything go to plan is obviously sound being lean as fuck is sick obviously for the Instagram looking sick yeah. um, but actually being out and about in a t-shirt looking very small is just it's probably Small, the worst thing, depleted. it's extremely disheartening um, but then obviously as soon as you take your t-shirt off you look amazing but obviously you're not going to be walking around with your t-shirt off all the time and then obviously starting a bulk it's sick because you're having your bounce back from your cut you stack on a load of like strength um, most of it being like what you had originally before you started cutting and then you start piling on the strength and the size um, which is obviously good and obviously when you start your carb when you start upping your carbs after cutting as well you start filling out yeah exactly full and probably out. I probably prefer the look after you've cut it and you've started bulking for about a month. Do you think? Where like you're, 10, you're more full and you're not fat. as lean. Yeah. Um, obviously, you can still see abs and stuff. Um, yeah, but yeah, both are good. Both are good. For different reasons. Are there too many people wanting to be architects? Um, <laughs> so what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you can never have enough, like enough architects. It's a, it's a, it's like a, a business that is going to be com like constantly growing. You're Everyone always going to need an Everyone's going to need an architect. Um, but the only problem is, there's a lot of people that want to be an architect, but don't have what it takes to become a, an architect. So a lot of people at uni, they go in maybe with the wrong idea, maybe want to go in just to earn the money. They're not actually that interested in architecture. A lot of the time then people will fail because they're not that interested and they don't actually realise how much work you've got to put in to become an architect. Like it, the course is bonkers, like I always bang on about. Um, so there are quite a few people that want to become an architect but don't realise how much it's got to take to become an architect. Um, but I guess as many architects as the better to be honest really. Many, many more architects yeah. better really. I said, well, that, I mean, I said that's so wrong man. Many architects are the more, the more architects, the, more the, architects better. the better. There we go. Five guys you look up to most in oh. the industry. Well, uh, go on. Then. It's probably going to be quite similar. For training physique, AJ Morris for natural bodybuilding. I think he's incredible and meticulous in his training nutrition routine. Uh, JP, the same with him. Jordan Peters. If you're not following him, I don't know what you're doing. The guys. So knowledgeable. Uh, YouTube wise, Max tune in for his content. Guzman because he's the OG and he's he's yeah. paved the way for, for yeah, any other yeah. fitness YouTuber. And then number five, I don't know, Bumstead for his physique because of, I Bumstead, think he's yeah. got the perfect physique and it's the physique I want to achieve. So they're probably my five as well. Mm. Uh, they're my five. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a difficult question. There's obviously a lot of people that we watch. 
Um, that I'd look up to. Christian Guzman definitely being up there in terms of content. Um, he hasn't been uploading as much recently, which I don't know what he's doing. He's to, well, to be fair, start so much running soon. But just for his business, yeah. Alpha League, yeah, YouTube, just everything. He, he started what? How he's Paid become? Away, he? How he's become so successful and is only 25. Yeah, it's an absolute joke. He's an inspiration in terms of everything, YouTube, like business stuff, just life in general of how far he's come. Uh, Max Tudor definitely for content, sick guy. Um, I'd personally say Joe Delaney in terms of um, like inspiration and him being just such a happy guy, such a positive guy. Um, obviously if someone else is being positive it's going to rub off onto you, so if I'm watching his videos a lot I tend to become a bit more positive. Someone I never um, watch you now. No, I no. can't imagine you watching him. No, I, never watch him. I don't think you'd like him. No, I'm not that keen. No, <laughs> see, sick, I absolutely sick love guy Joe. Too much. Sick guy, yeah. Just, the, just like vibes and. <laughs> yeah. well, I, quite, I quite like that stuff. Um, and then who else? Two more. Um, oh god. What physiques? Physiques. Steve. Steve Cook and David Laid probably. David Laid a year ago. Mm. Right now he's a bit smaller, but David Laid is his physique is unreal. Like back in the day similar age as well similar age similar height a little bit taller six foot three isn't he? yeah he's about my height yeah and obviously how he's got a million million followers on instagram and he's only 19 20 which is pretty sick as well. yeah it's insane next question tips for exams i personally don't have any exams so do you have any exams yeah i've got five at the end of the year yeah. uh, this is your question then. i um I don't know about tips, what I'm doing for my exam is I'm actually staying here over Easter, Monday to Thursday night, Friday morning, and then going home, like back home home uh, for weekends, and so I'm going to go to the library Monday, Thursday, Friday, revise for many hours a day, and then I'm going to have my chill time and downtime at home, and I don't have to do much work at home. Um, put the work in, don't leave it to the last minute like I do, um, put the work in throughout the year, um, routine, structure, for your revision as well, plan it all out, and don't stress out. Don't stress out too yeah. much. It's not the end of the world if something goes wrong. And yeah. like, they, they usually go better than you think. They usually yeah. like people. Over, I think people over exaggerate how hard they are. They not yeah. usually yeah. like you've done the work all year. You should be able to do the exam. Don't stress out. Chill out about it. And uh, yeah, good luck to everyone on the exams. Yeah, I guess definitely the one about not stressing out. For me, when I was doing A levels and GCSEs. My anxiety would be through the roof when I'm going into an exam. Yeah, like, see, I'm the opposite. I'd be so scared. Like, I used to be so scared. Um, I get more nervous of... about like a squat PR. Genuinely, yeah, see, I don't. I, I I can go. I'd rather exams all year. They don't bother yeah. me one bit. So I was just too scared. Way too, <laughs> bro. I was, bro. I, I couldn't hack them. Hence why I'm now doing a course that is 100% coursework. So I don't have to do any exams. Come on. Where did I get my specs? Oh, your glasses, you got them on you? Nah, I got them on me. Uh, Amazon, blue light I'll blockers. Put a picture, I'll put a picture Blue light me. blockers um, off Amazon, they're like 25 quid. Uh, they're they look pretty they are, they are cool, they're and they are, um, they're really helpful. They have helped my sleep massively. Um, when to, do you mini cut, and when to start a mini cut? I personally don't. Um, I haven't this year, have done in the past. Uh, on In and off season, if you're getting too big, uh, you're not progressing as much, it is becoming fat, and you've maxed out your calories. I'm not talking two and a half thousand, three thousand, three thousand five. When you are really seriously eating a lot of calories, um, cut back, drop five kilo, however much you need, and start again. Uh, go for like eight weeks, six to eight weeks, but uh, they're not essential, but if you are packing on the pounds, progress is slowing down and it is becoming fat, and you're getting a diminishing return with your bulk, then uh, yeah, start a mini cut, but apart from that, um, yeah, go for it. It's also wise if you have got a lot of body fat, mini cut, maintain, and then properly cut. Uh, but yeah, I'd also advise if you are like a beginner, don't at training, just don't mini cut, just no. bulk as for as long as possible. Like for me, I've been training two, three years now, well, two years properly, and I still don't do mini cuts because I feel like I need to optimize my time in kind of building them like natty gains, like just like newbie gains. Don't buy into the Instagram shredded all year round. Yeah, um, if you are natural, you need to have big off seasons. Um, just, just literally eat as much as you can for as long as possible, put on as much size and strength as possible. Try not to worry about mini cut. Yeah. If maybe if you 
like a lot of people don't want to kind of lose their abs or whatever i used to be like that i used to be that guy who if i saw abs didn't want to lose them but like if you're 17 18 19 and you're bulking and you're not that big yeah you're gonna look better than than your mates 17 18 uh, even if you haven't got abs because you yeah. you're you're a lot bigger you look better so so up until you really need to cut don't uh, yeah. keep bulking just put on as much size as possible especially as i say if you're a beginner just put on just like make the most of them like newbie years because like they're the years you want to make the most of and put on as much size as possible facts because that's like where you're making your most gains what's your secret to become like that i'm assuming it's the picture on my story so what's the secret to be looking semi-shredded or just train mate that's literally it there is no secret no just put the work in train be consistent with it be consistent with your food train hard yeah train, train hard like yeah progressively progressively not like the people who are in the gym today <laughs> oh my god gym was absolutely nonsense. nonsense but genuinely train hard train to your highest intensity and be consistent with it don't leave well. anything behind in the gym you're going in there to put a fucking shift in and the gains will come i don't like, know how to respond to that <laughs> Siri Cheers, doesn't train hard. Um, next question. How do you keep motivated when you have bad days? Ooh. Goal. Goals. Yeah. Goals. Um, sometimes I have bad days. Sometimes I have horrific leg days because of my knees. And I, like the, in the past couple of months, I've had to just scrap leg days and it's, it's gutted me. But um, I just think I'm saving myself for the next week, saving myself for the next time. Recovery. If you're having a bad day, I don't know, how do you, goals, think of the bigger goal, think of the yeah, bigger picture. Yeah, when you're having a bad day, I guess it's looking at the bigger picture, maybe if you're having a bad day, bad day and you're trying to force yourself to have a better day, maybe just take a step back and think, all right, okay, today's not my day, I'm going to have a rest day today, or I'm going to maybe, maybe not do any work today because I'm not feeling up to it. Yeah. Take a step back, reserve Princess. your energy, smash it the next day, um, then make sure every day is like a better day. So obviously, if, you, if you're having a bad day, just think about it like this, right, let's restart, let's make tomorrow a better day, and then you can build the momentum up back up again. Uh, but I personally, if I have a bad day, I try not to think about it too heavily because I don't want it to ruin my, my vibe and my situation. So I just try and just get on with it. You're going to have bad days, it's inevitable. Um, whether that's in the gym, whether that's at uni or whatever. If you I have just, a bad day in the gym, make a note of it. Yeah. Uh, when, I, when I'm ill or I'm, or I'm having a seriously off day in my logbook, I, I note it. Uh, because mm. cause that doesn't represent where you are training wise. Bad day, you're not as strong. Don't think, fuck's sake, I've lost all my strength gains, what's happened? Just make a note of it, reassess, have a rest day the next day. You're probably fried, you're probably taxed, and uh, come back better and stronger. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, one, I've got one more. Single muscle group splits opinion. Uh, I've tried single muscle groups, I've tried push pull legs, and now I'm push pull legs low volume. Um, I like my current push pull legs way better than just like chest. I'm, I haven't done just chest like back, arms for a very long time. Uh, I did used to do like chest and try. Uh, but if you're doing chest once a week, say you're doing 20 working sets, and no, how many of them sets are gonna actually go towards gains? How many of them are drunk volume? If you're doing chest on a Monday of 20 sets and then you're doing it the next Monday, Surely the frequency, surely it's way better to get more frequency in and do chest 10 sets on a Monday and 10 sets on a Friday and then you've got two periods of growth in the week rather than them 20 sets where after 10 sets, how much of them sets contribute towards muscle towards muscle growth. I think the secret is training smart and uh, exercise selection. But training also what suits you because like Kieran did low volume with me and he he, he, he didn't enjoy it and he's back on his high volume thing. He, he responds with high volume. I don't as well. I've always responded well off low volume. Um, so what, what works for you? But typically, if you can split that training up throughout the week and have more periods of growth, um, then you are going to progress a lot faster and more efficiently. So there's a question about working individual muscle groups. Yeah, muscle groups split. So like your bro <laughs> splits, your chest, back, shoulders, yeah. arms, legs, rest. Yeah, see I... At the moment, I'm working kind of bro split. I'm doing chest and triceps, back and biceps, shoulders, and then legs. Uh, so I'm kind of doing a four-day split at the moment, um, which I think is working for me at the moment. A lot of the time, I feel like it's healthy to kind of change up your workouts quite a lot. So I went through probably about six months of doing push-pull legs. And to be honest, I just got bored of it. I didn't really feel like I was making enough strength gains because... Obviously on a push session you're training chest and shoulders 
Um, so what I used to do was did an emphasis chest workout and then an emphasis shoulder workout. Obviously, you're doing that twice a week. What are you doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. You're doing like chest focused. Yeah, chest and shoulder then a shoulder focused. focused. And then, so obviously you're doing, if you're doing a chest focus, you're doing chest focus strength. So you're going heavy on chest and a bit lighter on shoulders. Because obviously if you're going to be doing heavy chest, you're going to be more fatigued when you come to do your shoulders. And then the same the other way around. And for me, it worked quite well for a long time. Um, but for me, I just needed a little bit of a change, change back to kind of like the bro split of doing like chest and triceps, back and biceps. And it's working quite a lot for me at the moment um, because obviously my arm frequency has gone up. So I'm now doing an arm workout. I forgot to say I'm doing an arm workout, didn't I? Yeah, you're so doing, doing, you're doing, doing arms and then you've got- chest and triceps, back and biceps, shoulders, arms, legs. So I'm doing a five day split actually. I forgot about arms. So then I'm doing, so then I'm training arms technically three times a week um, because arms is a weak point for me um, I guess that's another thing kind of training to, to maximize like, arms a week for me so I obviously do push pull legs and I do triceps at the end of push buys at the end of pull uh, but I do legs push pull so actually at the end of legs I actually do two bicep exercises as well because they're a weak point for me so yeah, I'm so getting that frequency in three times a week um, but as long as it suits you and you're training whatever hard you, enough. you enjoy really as well. Of course, any kind of lifting weights is gonna, is gonna contribute to, towards muscle growth. Um, everyone's got different opinions on it. It's what works for you and like and how, how it suits you really. Yeah. yeah. As long as you're training hard and getting that frequency in, you're gonna make gains. Right, I've got two questions left. Favorite lift? Right now, incline machine press. Over time, bench press is my strongest one. So uh, yeah, incline machine press right now, it's something that I really want to progress and I'm enjoying, uh, but always, I've always wanted to be the best bencher, big bencher, so bench press. See, I enjoy bench, but I'm not that good at it. So if you're not going to be very good at something, then a lot of the time it's not going to be your favorite thing. So for me, even though I haven't, haven't done it in a few months, probably deadlifting still. Don't I like absolutely it. love a deadlift. Lifting a heavy weight off the ground and completing them, like a strong rep is the best feeling ever. Um, I haven't deadlifted in like three months, four months. I'd love to get back into it, but I need to sort my back out first, but probably deadlifting just because for me, I can see the most progression there and I enjoy it. Um, yeah, I do like a good bench though, but my bench didn't increase that much. So, Also favorite lift in terms of my muscle connection, the one that I feel the most is a, a plate loaded low row. That's like my favorite exercise to do in the gym. I absolutely love it. Just, just low row. it out there yeah. from the lats, I love it. Right. So final question of the day is going to be plans for competing um, for me right this minute I am not looking to compete I'd absolutely love to compete but just because of the whole uni work at the moment everything getting on top of me um, I kind of need to get back in the routine of training getting these videos up and everything so competing is just not in my mind at the moment definitely something I want to do in the next like two years maybe maybe when I finish my degree and I've got like more time to kind of focus on it focus on my training making it like a priority over the uni work um so yeah i would like to compete definitely but for right now probably not for a while uh yeah plans to compete i'm competing in 15 and 14 weeks time 16th of june um 16th of june barbarian classic 29th of june muscle talk pca muscle talk in kettering and then my two shows for the summer and even if like i do well in muscle talk and yeah, getting back to the finals. I won't be doing that because I, I want to have a good summer and um, I want to get straight back into a bulk as well because I'm only young and I want to be a lot bigger. So I'm doing two shows this year, but they're the only two shows that I am going to do. So yeah, plans to compete. And that yes. will be sick as well. Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be sick. Sick for the channel. Sick videos. Sick videos. Definitely sick for look the out for them um, on the on Tim's channel. I'm going to get Ollie to film both comps as well. Yeah, that'll be sick. So there's going to be, some, be sick, nice some sick footage and uh, sick for the ground. And I will be there as well. I'll be there watching you, filming it myself. Can't wait. So yeah, that is going to be it for today's q and It's been like 30 minutes long, which is pretty sick. Yeah, it's Might probably going to be very raw. pretty much 30 minutes as well. Isn't um, it? So yeah, thank you so much for watching the video, guys. Make sure you subscribe to me and Tim. Thank you. Follow me on Instagram, of course, and Tim Stuart Fitness on Instagram as well. Um, so yeah, that is it from us today. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. Make sure to smash the... Make sure to smash make the thumbs up button. Make sure, I always get that one wrong. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. Make sure to smash the thumbs up button, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we will see you next time.
Subscribe to Thomas Roundtree, legend. <laughs>